Welcome into Caldwell County today. I'm your host, Keegan Matheson, and today we have a special guest, Irv Erta. Uh, you are representing the American Legion today, right? That's correct. Okay. American and Legion, post, post 29. 29. Yes. Dysart Kindle. Okay, cool deal. Uh, and you wanted to talk a little bit about the history of, of this particular post, or sure. just American Legion in general? Sure. Yeah. Um, just go from there. Well, going, going back to history at the end of World War I, the war to end all wars, but <laughs> that didn't turn out quite right. But they, uh, uh, the American forces were still in France, and they wanted to get home, but it was difficult to get them transported home, and so morale was kind of getting low. And then a couple of officers, including Theodore Roosevelt Jr., started to organize a group in Paris. They had a little conference to get to boost morale and give the the, uh, me the veterans to something to do. Hmm. And uh, that carried over and became the American Legion uh, in 1919 in uh, St. Louis. They officially became the American Legion. Now, Post 29 uh, was formed actually in July of 1919. Uh, so we're actually 103 years old, but it, it was listed as Caldwell County Post 29. And th two years later, in 1922, they, they were chartered by the American Legion. And they adopted the name, originally they were called, they were going to be named Albert Co Alfred Corpening Post-29, hmm. because at that time they thought Alfred Corpening was the first soldier from Caldwell County to die in World War I. Well, actually he was the first soldier to be shot, but he didn't die. He still, he, he died later on. But two other soldiers, uh, Charles Dysart and uh, Gene Kendall, were the first two soldiers from Caldwell County to die in World War I. And so the post is named Dysart Kendall, American Legion, Post 29, Incorporated. And we were chartered by the American Legion, which was formed years after. And so we were, uh, that was July 11th, 19. 22. So this July is our 100th anniversary of being chartered with the Legion. So Okay, okay. So when the Legion, when the people came home, um, if you understand that the wars, in, in World War I, all the boys came home at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they all came home to the same town, and they said, well, let's, let's get together because soldiers want camaraderie. They want to share their experiences with other soldiers. So they formed a little group and they became the American Legion Post. And uh, then they went along and then of course the war didn't end the wars because 20 years later we're back in a war, World War II, and then in 1946, 46, everybody comes home again. So the Legion experienced big growth in membership right at, right at the start and then back in 1946 and 47 when the World War II soldiers came home. So. Uh, now, then the later wars, Korea, they came back in pieces, Vietnam, they come back pieces in time. They went to Vietnam for a year, and then you come back, and, and so the flow was a little bit slow. So, But in 1947, the American Legion Post 29 had uh, over a thousand members, and a lot of that is due to the surge of members coming back from uh, World War II. Um, yes, sir. The, uh, they didn't have a place to meet when he first started. And so they met in places like uh, the third floor of the, uh, uh, what became the uh, Union National Bank. And they liked that place. It had facilities and stuff like that. They also met over Span Hours store. So they were looking for places to meet. In the meantime, they were trying to get money to find a place. And so um, in 1943, the American Legion Post 29 uh, purchased a house at the present location, 401 North Main Street, and it was a house that was owned by Dr. A. Goodman and his wife. And I guess they had passed, passed away, and so they bought the house for $7,000, a 10-room, two-story white house right there, right, right, and right across from the hotel. So, uh, <laughs> Sounds like great house prices. <laughs> and, they, and they got it for a song. They got it for $7,000. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, but the war was going on, World War II was going on, so they, they were busy sending things like cigarettes and, and stuff to the troops 
right. uh, cigarettes was the most popular thing that they wanted over there. So I think they one time they sent a shipment of four hundred thousand cigarettes over to the soldiers. Oh wow! So well, it was. It they was, need something to distract them. I yeah, guess, from all yeah. That. <laughs> Nothing like a foxhole and a cigarette. That's true. <laughs> So um, they were meeting in various places, and then they had this store, but because of the war, they didn't do anything. But in 1947, um, uh, let me back up for a second and, and tell another piece of, of this history, is that um, when they were formed, the, Leno the uh, Caldwell County Chamber of Commerce gave them a grant of some money to buy musical instruments, and they formed the American Legion Band. And uh, uh, James C. Harper was the leader, he was the director of that band. And it only lasted a couple of years because I guess the, the instrument people did just, they weren't really that musical. Yeah. And so they donated all of those instruments to Lenore High School. And that became the Lenore High School band and, and uh, Mr. Harper, he became director over there. So uh, that's where, and Lenore High School band became very famous in later years. And so that was, they also started a baseball team, but now at the end of the war, World War they had, World War II, um, they, they had this building, but it was just a 10-room, two-story house. And so they knocked the building down, they had it raised, and they built another building, the present building that's there. And on the building they included a, an auditorium, which is 120 feet by 60 feet. And they put a stage on there and they hosted all kinds of events it's mostly dances, and I guess before my time, the the hotel across the street was right across from the Legion. The patients, the people from the hotel, now it's Konani Apartments. Mm -hmm. So they go there, and it, it was a, just a place to be on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so from your perspective, what do you think that the American Legion's goal always was? Was it always just to aid the community in any way, or did you have a well, certain uh, guiding principle to start it off? Actually, there are four what we call pillars, Okay. the things that we stand for. And the first one is veterans and rehabilitation. The people that are served, they come back wounded, um, and their families. So we, our first priority is veterans. Second, we look at national security. We want to have national security, and that includes local security. So we do things like recognizing uh, firefighter of the year, police officer of the year, deputy sheriff of the year, EMT of the year, to, to focus uh, the community on the fact that these are the people who go out on the first responses and do the things that we can't or won't do. You know, there's a fire, the fireman runs in, we run out. So, mm -hmm. so, so we do that. And then we also have Americanism, which takes programs that promote American values. Uh, we sponsor a baseball team, we sponsor a junior softball team, girls fast pitch. We have a, 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 a junior shooting program. We do a lot of things with youth. We sponsor scholarship contests for high school students. Um, we give Eagle Scout scholarships. We give out uh, money for uh, scout leaders to get trained and go to training courses. And so that's our Americanism program. And then we also have the, um, the youth and children programs. So to raise children so that children have an opportunity to share in American values and, and, and develop skills. So those are our four pillars, the Americanism, the, the youth and children, the uh, um, veterans and uh, national security. So, awesome. And so we look at things that we can do in the community and also we try to do things to get to veterans involved. Um, we, for instance, we hold a coffee call twice, twice a week, so veterans can come in. Some of them, it, it's all by donation, so they can get a cup of coffee, they can have some biscuits and gravy, maybe some orange juice, have some breakfast and get a chance to talk to other people, other veterans, and share their experiences. Usually it's a lot of lies they're telling, but that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's to be expected. So. Uh, when People say post-29. I, I, I do think about my dad and how he used to play baseball for post-29. Post oh, okay. Time. And he talks about his post-29 years very fondly. And, and, and that just seems like everything that you guys do, you're putting your hands on a lot of different lives and, and trying to affect people in a positive way and try to uh, think make our community uh, right. so a big asset to the community. And, uh, to have 100 years of it is a pretty big um, 
deal and, and something to celebrate for sure. Well, yeah, and the Legion was a uh, well, the Legion was a uh, hundred years in uh, 1919 or 2019. So, and again, we we're not going to quibble over three years, but <laughs> <laughs> we were we were there when it started. So. Right, exactly, so, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, did you want to say anything else about the history or? I, I don't know. I, I made some notes or something here, but I, I think I covered most of them. Okay. And, well, cool deal. Uh, oh, the building, well, they paid $7,000 for the building, and then they cost 150000 to to build a new one. So, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, and, uh, and there are people that have been in town for a while, or the county, don't know that there was wrestling there, and, and we have wrestling there now. Uh, so... Uh, if you like wrestling, they, we do it, and it's a great. We we lend it out to grand uh, parties and weddings, wedding receptions, and uh, and um, yeah, any kind of events. We've had the band concerts there. And, so. so, what can people do to make to ensure that the American Legion stays intact? And can they volunteer? Can they give money? What 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 do you guys ask for? Well, the biggest thing is membership. Every company has a product, and our product is members. And members give us the power of, of talking to Congress. When we got X number of members, and, and the American Legion was responsible for the GI Bill. All right? It was responsible for the, what was called the Legion Act. And that is, um, American Legion is not as well known as VFW or D Dis Disabled American Vets. Those have a name, American Legion. Sometimes people think, well, maybe that those guys fighting around in in Egypt and the desert, the French guys, uh, so, but we're not. And so we're probably the largest organization, but probably the least well-known. And to be a member of the American Legion, you only have to have served one day of active duty since 1941, December 7th, 1941, until the present. And prior to that, you used to have to have served in a time where there was a declared war. but. Our position was that during the Cold War, we were maybe butting heads with Russia a little bit, but it was not actually a declared war. And so we petitioned Congress to create what was called the Legion Act that says anybody that's a veteran is a veteran, and they can, they can qualify to be in the American Legion. So it opened up the whole thing, and, and we're really a family operation because we have the American Legion, but we also have the auxiliary and the auxiliary is, used to be called the ladies' auxiliary, but now it's the auxiliary because in order to be in the auxiliary, your spouse had to be a veteran. So when we went through the Cold War, there were a lot of women veterans. So now their husbands can be in the auxiliary. Right. And we have people that are couples with, they both are veterans, so they're both, they're dual members. They're auxiliary and they're veterans, uh, legionnaires. And then we also have a Legion riders for my motorcycle riders who are members of the Legion. We have Legion cruisers where, with older cars. If you like antique cars, you can be involved. We have a Sons of the American Legion program. If, you, if you're not a veteran, but your dad, mm -hmm. are you a veteran? No, sir. Is your dad a veteran? No, sir. Was your grandfather a veteran? Yes. <laughs> okay, you're Bingo. eligible. <laughs> okay. You're eligible. <laughs> All right. You could be a member of the Sons of the American Legion. And, and they perform Legion programs, but they, uh, they're not Legion members, but it's an organization, and they're working on the same values that we're looking for. We want to promote American values. We want to patriotism. We want to uh, promote national security. We want to promote uh, helping other people. Uh, so much of what we do is service. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we we made breakfast tacos and took them around to the police department, the fire department, the sheriff's department, the EMS, and we had to do it in shifts so that everybody could get get their breakfast burrito. So uh, we do little things like that, and um, we still have a good baseball program. And so many people around here know that post twenty nine Legion baseball, and mm -hmm. um, there's a number of states championships that we have won for that, but uh, we're more than baseball. Awesome. Well, yeah. I just appreciate you coming in, Irv, and, and talking about the, the 100th anniversary of this. This is uh, pretty monumentous, and uh, I thank you for your service, because you apparently had to be a veteran to be a part of this. I was. <laughs> I was. And, well, I still am a veteran. But, so yeah. just, just, uh, just while we're spitballing here, 
Uh, what do you think is the most important thing you learned from your time in the service? Um, probably discipline. Discipline and working together with people who you might not necessarily like. Uh, I mean, and that's, you know, there's, there's no enemies in foxholes. Uh, you're, you're, he's got your back, you've got his back. Whether you like him or not, that's, that's the situation that it is. And, and, uh, and we're really trying to reach out to younger members too now because the guys that come home now from the wars in the Middle East have a little different mindset. They, they're, they're more action-oriented. They, they make decisions on the, on the spot where, as opposed in some of the wars, that everybody waited for the colonel or general to tell them what to do, and then they did that, and then they told them to do it till it stopped. So uh, a lot of them have more, they, they want to get really involved. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy because sometimes some of our older people say, and, and you get this in any group, um, the founders of the group. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, it's our group, and this is the way we've done it, and we're always going to do it this way. Even though it's not working, we're going to keep doing it, and that's Albert Einstein, so that's the definition of insanity. <laughs> so um, we, we're trying to get North Mill members, and, and part of that problem is that we have to get programs that affect the whole family. I mean, baseball is one, and if we a boy's playing baseball and his parents are veterans, there's a, there's a tie there. But um, sometimes if we have maybe movie nights, and we've done some things with National Guard, we hosted Halloween parties for the kids of the members of the National Guard, and we did it in our building. And some of our guys dress up in costumes and do strange things, and, and, but there's candy and games and fun for everybody. So <laughs> that's uh, really where we're at. So we're trying to reach out because we lose members. You know, very few members of, uh, of the Legion are still alive who served in World War II. And that's uh, 75, 80 years ago. So uh, we're, we're losing those. We've been fortunate. We've been able to increase our membership while losing some. So, right. But we're still ahead. So. Uh, so is there anything else you wanted to, to tell the people? Any events coming up or any sign-ups or anything you want to let people know before we get out of here? Mm. No, I think we just, well, we finished up our playoffs and we didn't do so well. We got beaten the third, second round. But oh. Yeah, well, <laughs> but the boys fought hard, so. That's good. That's uh, all that matters. Yeah. As long as they're well, we, uh, yeah, well, the, probably the biggest thing coming up in the future is the Veterans Day ceremony. Okay. We conduct a Memorial Day cer ceremony and a Veterans Day ceremony. And, and they're two different days. One on Veterans Day is a celebration of all the people who are veterans even the ones that died, but especially the ones that are alive. Memorial Day is a time that we remember those who died in the service of the country. So, again, we're there, we're, we're trying to promote those American values and so on, but, but we do those. And awesome. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, Irv, and thanks for talking to thanks me. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. And nice, thank, nice uh, day. Awesome. Uh, right. Thank you for watching Caldwell County Today.